Okay, we're back at it again in this next video here. We're going to be looking at evaluating limits analytically. So we'll be using a little bit of our algebra skills. Now in your textbook, this will be section 1.3. Now in this section, there are several videos that we're going to be looking at. Uh, but the first one here just simply is uh, some stuff we have on our PowerPoint that uh, we'll just kind of go over. And then we're going to look at some, uh, some problems we actually do some algebra. But first of all, I'll begin a couple of a little bit about the section and a couple of essential questions. Here's the first one. Okay, what are the properties of the limits? I'm going to bring the properties up. We have them on the PowerPoint, so I'm going to show you the properties of limits. Okay, what strategies can we use to find limits analytically? Right, so I'm going to show you a couple of strategies. And then how can I use cancelization and rationalization techniques to find limits? So how do you use these two these two limits to uh, find a, to find a limit of a function? Okay. So let's get started. Now there's three methods for finding a limit algebraically. So here's the first one, direct substitution. And you always try this one first because it's the easiest to do. You just take, a, if x is approaching some number, you take that number and plug it in. So just direct substitution, you plug it in for x or whatever your variable is in your function. So you use direct substitution, that's the first one. Now if direct substitution don't work, you got to try, try to factor the problem. So uh, if direct substitution not, doesn't work, the chances are there's a hole in your graph. So we're going to see if we can factor the hole out. So you've got to be able to factor uh, in order to use a factoring method. Now, I wonder, in the next video, I'm going to do a little review on factoring a couple of things. I'm going to learn a couple of factoring techniques. Uh, it's a short video just to kind of review you on some of your factoring uh, techniques. And then the next, what's called the conjugate method. And this is what I call it. Uh, it involves uh, certain types of problems involving radicals where you have to rationalize the numerator. So it's kind of different, but uh, we'll, we'll show you that last. Now, so to get started, now there's three basic properties, three properties of, uh, of limits that we need to know. Here's the first one. The limit of B as X approaches C. Right, so the limit of B as X approaches C. So, so think of the function Y equals, you know, Y equals some number, a constant function. So no matter what X approaches, it's you know, the y value is always that same number. So as x approaches c of, you know, any number b, it's simply b, right? Okay, the next property, the limit as x approaches c of x. Now, once again, use direct substitution. Substituting c in for x gives you c, right? So uh, think of the property here. This is just direct substitution. Here's the next one. The limit as x approaches n of, of x to the n as x approaches c. Once again, substitute c in for x gives you c to the n. So this is just a couple of examples. You're going to use direct substitution. Uh, plug the, the, the x, the value that x is approaching. You're going to substitute that directly into your function. Now let's look at a couple of examples. Okay, here's our first. Now this uh, this kind of models. This is an example uh, utilizing the first property we looked at: the limit as x approaches negative five of three. Now if you can imagine the graph of y equals three, it's always on a line. It's always three. No matter what value x approaches, so the limit as x approaches negative 5 of 3 is 3. So once again, think of a horizontal line crossing the y-axis at 3, y is always 3. Okay, the limit as x approaches negative 4 of x. Substitute negative 4 in for x, gives us negative 4. So just plug it in. Okay, let's try uh, the limit as x approaches 2 of x to the third power. So substitute 2 in for x. We would end up with 2 to the third power, or 8. Right, so there's another example of uh, our third property that we looked at. Uh, next, let's take a look at uh, a couple, couple properties of limits. So a couple of properties. Now, what I'm going to describe here, we're going to describe two functions, kind of in a general, general, uh, general description of uh, two functions, f and g. Now, this is what it says. So let's let b and c be real numbers. So it's that n, uh, uh, let n be a positive integer, and let f and g be functions with the following limits. So once again, all we're doing here, all we're doing here is describing two functions, f and g, and the two functions don't have two different limits. All right, so we're going to use these two functions to describe several properties. All right, so here's the first one. Or here's here's our, our description, I guess, if you will. Okay, the first function is f of x. So the limit of f of x is x approaches c, we're going to describe the limit of this function as L. It could be, it could be any number, but we're going to describe it as L. Now, the second function is G of X. So, the limit as X approaches C of G of X is K. So, once again, we have two different functions. 
f of x and g of x. As x approaches c on either function, the first uh, the, the limit of f of x as x approaches c is l. The limit of g of x as x approaches c is k. So two different functions approaching the same number. The limit on the first one is l. The limit on the second one is k. Now here's our first property. What's called the scalar multiple property. Right, now it says uh, the limit of x approaches c of f of x times b. Now b can be is just simply some number being multiplied by some number. It's b times l. Now once again, remember, l is the limit of f of x as x approaches c. So you just multiply by that scalar multiple. So you multiply by a number. Okay, the next property. Now this is called the sum and difference property. So we're taking the limit as as x approaches c of f of x plus g of x. Well, the limit of f of x we said was l, the limit of g of x was k, so the, the, the limit here would be l plus k. The limit of f of x, the limit of g of x, add them together or subtract them, whichever the case may be. So this is called the sum and difference property. Now the next property. Now this is the product property. Okay, this is the limit as x approaches c of f of x times g of x. The limit of f of x is l, the limit of g of x is k, so we end up with l times k. So this is the product property. So we have a product of two, two limits, f of x and g of x, and you would simply multiply their limits together. Right? Uh, the next property would be the quotient property. Now the quotient property is the, if the limit as x approaches c of f of x divided by g of x. Remember the limit of f of x is l, the limit of g of x is k, so this would be l divided by k. So limit of f of x divided by the limit of g of x. So L divided by k. Okay, next, the power rule. Okay, this is the limit as x approaches c of f of x to the n power. Okay? The limit of f of x is L, so that would be L to the n power. Okay, so this is just a, a couple properties. Now, I think we have some examples here on the next slide. Let's take a look at, uh, uh, well, let's take a look at some direct substitution here. This is used, utilizing some of our properties that we just looked at. So this involves uh, direct substitution. Now, here's our first example. Okay, let's take uh, 5 times the, uh, the limit of x as x approaches 2. Now, substitute 2 in for x. So this is direct substitution. You always try direct substitution when you're evaluating any limit. You try that first. And if that doesn't work, then we try some other stuff. But let's try substitute 2 in for x. Gives us 5 times 2, which is 10. So the, the answer here uh, would be 10. So the limit as x approaches 2 of x would be 5 times 2 or 10. So 5 would be your scalar multiple, so we're using the scalar multiple property here. Okay, the next property. Uh, the limit as x approaches negative 3 of x squared plus x. Now, this is the sum difference property of a sum. Substitute negative 3 in, so use direct substitution. Okay, let's plug negative 3 in for x. Uh, gives us negative 3 squared plus uh, negative 3. And that would give us what? The positive 6. Be positive six, so you get like nine plus negative three, which is six. Okay, our next uh, our next example here. Let's try this one. Okay, let's take the, the limit as x approaches pi. Now we're going to do pi. I'm going to bring the substitution in also. The limit as x approaches pi of x times cosine x. Now this is a product. Right, so x times cosine x is a, a linear function times a, times a trig function. Right, so this would be pi times cosine pi. And after that, we uh, simplify and evaluate. Cosine pi is negative 1, so we end up with pi times negative 1. So we uh, multiply pi times negative 1, gives us negative pi. So the answer here should just be negative pi. So x times cosine x, find the limit of x is pi. The limit of cosine pi is negative 1, so be pi times negative 1, or negative pi. So for a multiplication, Find the limit of each and multiply them together. Right. Uh, some more examples. Let's try number four. So the limit as x approaches one. Now this is a, an example illustrating the quotient property that we looked at. So the quotient property. Uh, use direct substitution, substituting one in for x. For every x gives you one squared plus one plus two divided by one plus two. So what's that? Four divided by two, which should be two. That's the correct answer there would be two. Direct substitution. Let's try this here. This is the uh, uh, power property. Uh, once again, using direct substitution, let's take the 4, plug it in for x, gives us 4 plus 2, which is 6. And 6 squared gives us 36. So just 
direct substitution. Now, the next set of examples, I want you guys to try these first. So let's uh, make sure you have your calculator turned on and ready to go. Uh, and uh, after each example, after we bring the example up, I want you to pause me. Okay, take a second or two, put in your calculator. Make sure you can use uh, your calculator to, uh, uh, to come up with the, uh, uh, with the limit using direct substitution. So this is your practice. I want you to do the, the first example. Here it is. Okay, the limit as x approaches 1 of 3x cubed minus 2x squared plus 4. Uh, so uh, uh, once again, pause the, uh, 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 pause the video. Go ahead and get your answer and see if you get the same thing that I got. So substituting. Now, you should have your answer already. You should have you paused. You should already have done this. So substituting 1 in for x gives us, uh, evaluating this gives us 5. And I want you to try the next one again. I'm going to bring the problem up. Pause the video. Get your answer using direct substitution, and then we'll bring the answer in, and you kind of check yourself. So here's the next one. Okay, here's our, uh, take the limit as x approaches 3, and the square root of x plus 1 over x minus 4. So go ahead and pause it, and get your answer. All right, that should already have you paused, and uh, you should already have your answer, so let's see, uh, let's see what you get. So substituting 3 in for x gives us 3 plus 1, which is uh, 4, the square root of 4 is 2. So you want 2 over 1 or negative 2. Right, so negative 2. And let's try the last one here, the next one. Okay, the limit as x approaches 3 of 2x minus 1, uh, quantity raised to the third power. Pause the video. Let's see what you get. Okay, you should already have your answer. All right, so uh, once again, substituting 3 and 3x, you should have gotten 125. So 125. Okay, one more example. Let's try this one here. So the limit as x approaches 0, assign x to the second power. So go ahead and try this one. Pause the video. All right, and you should already have your answer. Substituting 0 in for, zero in for x. Now sine 0 is 0. You have the 0 squared, which is 0. Right. Now let's take a look at the limits of some trigonometric functions. Now trigonometric functions, you use direct substitution just like you do any other function if you can do it first. So, Start off with number one, the limit as x approaches c of sine x is sine c. Take the c, plug it in for x. So once again, direct substitution. And this is going to be the case with each one of the, all seven of the trig functions. I'm going to bring each one of them up on the PowerPoint. Here's the next one. The limit as x approaches c of cosine x is cosine c. Right. And the third one, uh, the limit as x approaches c of tangent x is tangent c. Uh, the limit as x approaches c of cosecant x is cosecant c. That's number our fourth uh, trig function, the fifth one. Uh, the limit as x approaches c of secant x is secant c. And the limit as x approaches c of cotangent x is cotangent t. Uh, so remember with uh, any trig function, basically you're just using direct substitution. The number that x is approaching, you're going to plug it in for, for x in your function and then evaluate from there. That's true for trig functions and any other function. So once again, you use direct substitution first. Uh, if it doesn't work, then there's some stuff that we have to try for that. Now, some strategy for finding limits. All right, so if I'm going to always use direct substitution when possible. Substitute in for x, see what you get. Now, if direct substitution is not possible, then you factor and cancel, and then you use direct substitution. Now, if you try direct substitution and you end up with 0 over 0, now 0 over 0 indicates a whole. And that means we have to do uh, what's called uh, factor and cancel. We can factor the, we can cancel or factor the, the whole out, if you will, and, and remove it. So basically remove the whole, then we use direct substitution. All right? And uh, in our next video now, I'm going to do a little review over some factoring techniques that, that will come in handy in some of the problems that we'll be looking at. Now, next strategy, use a graph or a table to check your results. So if you, have a, you can always look at the graph real quick, bring the graph up and make sure it uh, kind of uh, verifies what you, what you should have gotten.